we thought it was really important to bring back surprise to the franchise and mystery to the franchise. I think that it's easy to forget now that when Bioshock 1 first came out, people were like, WTF, what am I seeing here? What is this? I, I, I don't get it. It's, it's cool and it's exciting, but I don't, what am I seeing? And we really wanted to go in a very different direction with Bioshock Infinite. We wanted to almost have people look at it and be like, I don't, what, is this a Bioshock game? I, I, don't, I don't quite understand. And to go back to that place where people were like, didn't quite feel solid in their footing and what, what they were seeing. And that's been exciting for us. And I think, you know, that we weren't surprised by the reaction we got when people sort of didn't at first know what to make of it. But I think the more, especially once these people see the demo, they understand what's going on and how it fits into the Bioshock um, world. There's two key components to a Bioshock game for us. Um, one is that you're exploring this strange, kind of fantastical world and it's still somehow grounded in the human experience, you know, like it still feels like a place that people might live in. And the other thing is that sort of weapons power combination and that you have a lot of choice about how you approach all the problems in the game. There's this expression which is when all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And in Bioshock you tended to have a lot of corridors and it's a corridor, tight corridor, two enemies, Tight corridor, three enemies. Tight corridor, one enemy. So shotgun and bolt tended to be something that you could use in every situation. And therefore, we weren't demanding the player use his tool set. And things like um, you know, the bees coming out of your arm, which is essentially a crowd control weapon, didn't have a lot of use because you just shoot the guy instead. You, you want to be able to challenge players to, to, to demand they use a broader palette of their tools. So once we started opening up the space, and you saw the spaces, the scale, once we go from one or two enemies to 15 enemies at a time, once we go to guys moving 80 miles per hour in a skyline, what are you going to do with a shotgun when the guy's half a mile away? What are you going to do with a sniper rifle when the guy's moving 80 miles per hour on a skyline? And so we have this huge tool set. We needed to expand what we demanded of the player in terms of what we wanted them to use in that tool set. We're never interested in saying, this is a commentary on current political situation X. We try to deal with themes that are a little more universal and timeless. I think that if you're seeing anything that's happening in America now or in any other country, it's not the first time it's happened. It's happened over and over and over again. Um, there have been nativist movements throughout history. I'm sure you go back to ancient times, there have been, you know, oh, the guys from that farm are no good. The guys from this farm are great. Um, you know, and so you see these things recurring. You certainly saw it in the time period of, uh, you know, the, the, 1900, the early 1900s time period. You saw a lot of nativist movements. So we're trying to deal with universal themes, not, not make sort of a narrow commentary on anything happened today. We're more interested in how societies evolve and how ideas evolve and how ideas become sort of people place themselves under the rubric of ideas.